Hey everyone, how's it going? This is a follow-up video to the how to make 30K out of your home garage video. And I'm gonna teach you in this video seven things that worked for me in building trust and confidence, attracting clientele, and not only attracting clientele, but attracting clientele that didn't uh, feel uncomfortable bringing their car to a home-based business. So stick around, seven tips, uh, watch them all. Okay, the first tip that I wanna share with you that made people com comfortable with coming to my business and also has increased my revenue the most out of any other decision that I've realistically made, and that is professional media. So when I first started, um, I was doing all of my own you know, cell phone camera, you know, whatever the case may be, a crappy microphone, and you name it. But I went to a car show, and I've never had good luck with car shows, and I don't recommend going to a car show. But the one thing that came out of going to a car show for me was I met my videographer, Ifla Media. And Ifla Media, you, if you see a professional video on our channel, on our Facebook, or whatever, it's all from him. So. Um, these videos are very obviously me. Uh, I got some upgraded microphone, um, but if you see our ads or you know the cars that we do, that's all Ifla Media. And so that was the number one thing. And so what does professional media give you? It, you know, when we're talking about a home-based business, that professional media gives an appearance of something elevated now i feel like our shop is already elevated i think it's clean it's you know technologically advanced um, it's got great equipment uh, but the professional media sort of elevates it even further and so many people come to our shop and don't even realize that you know we have a home-based business because from the pictures the professionalism uh, it just never crosses somebody's mind that this is a this is a house. And so my number one tip is professional media. Now, can you afford to hire a professional videographer for every car? That's up to you. I personally take a significantly less profit to have him on staff so that we always have professional documentation when it comes time to doing vehicles for clients. And that, that is gonna factor into my other tips out of the seven. So I'm gonna save it and not get into those tips yet. But let's say you can't hire a videographer full time. That's okay. But I would suggest you have somebody professional, not somebody who's free, who's trying to build their portfolio or something. You know, take somebody who's a professional and you pay them and at least do a few cars at least do a few ads and that is going to go a long way my number one ad that has generated me probably a hundred thousand dollars in revenue uh, was filmed by him and at one point i paid him a half a day work for that which was a few hundred dollars so that few hundred dollars has resulted in an ad that i've been running for long enough to generate six figures of income so a lot of times people overlook this. They think I can do this with my cell phone and I can do this all my own. And that's true, but not to the level of professional media. Now I've spent three minutes talking about professional media and that's because I think it's so important. So hopefully you've watched this and you take it to heart because I'm telling you, elevate your game. It's the best way to get ahead. All right, so tip number two, and I'm gonna kind of spoil it, or I kind of already spoiled it in tip number one, but tip number two is professional level advertising. Now, all my advertising is done by Ifla Media, and you know, we put together professional videos, even the pictures are done by him if we're using those in an ad, but we typically use video ads, which we've seen, they tend to work better. And that goes back to tip number one, which is professional media, because you can turn around and use that professional media in your advertising. And I highly suggest making sure that your videographer, make sure that they frame the shot in nine by 16 uh, vertical, because that's gonna be your best looking advertising for uh, uh, Instagram and even some of the Facebook versions. So we found widescreen, um, which I prefer, you know, uh, but 
you know, we're in the vertical generation now. So I, I highly suggest a professional advertising done by the professional media, but make sure that they frame it in vertical. So when you see our advertisements, we put them on YouTube for people to see um, in case they come across for them on YouTube. But when we upload them through Facebook or something for advertising, it's all vertical and that allows you to crop it a lot easier. Um, so that's, you know, that's been key for us. All right, and speaking of social media, we're gonna talk about tip number three, and tip number three is a social media presence. Now, why does that help you, you know, attract business to, I mean, it's common sense why it helps you attract business, but again, this goes back to tip number one, why does it help you with a home-based business? And that is because the, again, we're, we're presenting that professional appearance that you may not present without the professional media, with you know, just a couple like TikTok reels, which we do also, you know, all kind of like reels and TikTok and you know, we do some very amateur type stuff, but you know, we also have professional stuff. And so when I do social media, you know, I get 10 to 20 photos per car plus a like one minute feature or so uh, cinematic video. And you know, plus I do other reels and I chop those videos up and I post photos and I make reels out of the photos like you would see on Instagram where the, you know, the reels might change photos to the beat of the music or something like that. And, you know, I'm a one man show. So when we're talking about home based business, we're talking about small business, I'm a one man show. So I'm doing this all myself minus the videography. And so I use a lot of automations uh, called, I use one called Repurpose, I use Zapier, and I use uh, OneUp. And so basically what happens is I get a video and you know my primary platform is YouTube. That's what I care the most about because YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. And of course it's owned by the number one search engine in the world, Google. So I definitely care about YouTube the most. And so I don't worry about like a less reach or something. Uh, for an Instagram reel or a TikTok reel uh, video or whatever, uh, because it's reposted using an automation. So people will talk about that, but I don't personally care about that. Um, I use a lot of local hashtags, and frankly, you know, YouTube. I care about views and things to a, to a degree, and building a subscriber base. But on Instagram and TikTok. I don't really care as much, and I use a lot of local hashtags. And you know, I'm I'm trying to you know, get people locally. I don't really care if 7,000 people from India, which happens a lot with reels and, and things like that, and, and even YouTube shorts, you know, I don't care if they're watching my video because they're not my clients. I'm not selling anything online. So, you know, all that, that's just internet fame and ego and everything. And, and I, to a degree, I really don't care about that. Uh, so social media is important. And, you know, I'll make a video, uh, coming up on how to automate those processes. But needless to say, with minimal work, I make a video, why well, it is a lot of work, but with minimal additional work, you know, I make a YouTube short and you will find that pretty much all over. It goes to, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, I even, it goes to Pinterest, um, LinkedIn, um, I got all that stuff automated. So social media presence, it's super huge. All right, tip number four when it comes to your business, but especially a home-based business, is a clean, organized, professional workspace. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I have almost never had a client hesitant. I've had maybe one or two clients hesitant about a home-based business if they found out it was home-based. And, and I'm gonna tell you why that is. Because when a client thinks about a home-based business, they are thinking in their head, unfinished garage walls, dirty, dusty floors, concrete with oil stains, um, you know, just a kind of like a disaster, you know, like they're, they're picturing their own garage, honestly. And, you know, nine clients out of 10, you know, they have a very typical garage. And that's not to say that a garage can't have oil stains or unfinished walls. 
but they're thinking of their own garage, right? They're thinking of you in their own garage. Now, maybe they have, like I've got some clients that have some like pretty awesome shop setups or some awesome garage setups, but most clients are thinking about that like tan or unfinished wall with regular concrete. So if you're gonna run stuff out of your home, and I'm gonna talk about this later, if you're a legit business, you're running this stuff out of your home, you gotta make it look good. So if you see our shop and you see it in videos, most people don't even realize it's a home-based business. I've got you know polyaspartic floors, all my walls are painted, professional lighting. It's always immaculate in here, um, unless I'm like in the middle of something. But it's almost always immaculate. It's cleaned up between cars. You know, there's a, there's a fridge with drinks, there's a dehumidifier, it's climate controlled. You know, everything's organized and in its own place. All the drawers have labels. I mean, pe when people see this place, they say this is the nicest garage I've ever seen. I've never had an issue once people have seen it um, or seen the videos. And most people don't even realize, and that goes back to the professional media and you know, you combine professional media and professional advertising and social media, which is done here, um, and you combine that with you know, a clean, organized, you know, technologically advanced, nice tools. It doesn't even have to be nice because they don't really, you know, they're not gonna be focused on what brand you have in terms of your polishers and things, but it needs to look nice, right? And, and it, whether that's, you know, Bauer polishers on the wall or Flex and Rupus, you know, it doesn't matter. Like it just needs to be clean. You know, you don't want your equipment looking like it has a bunch of dust everywhere. Um, you know, you got to clean up between, especially got to clean up if a client comes, you know, you offer them a drink. Um, and it will really seem like it's not a home-based business, which that's our goal. That, that is our goal is to not be a home-based business, but be a home-based business, if that makes sense. All right. Tip number five is gonna be client communication and client relationship. And when you have a good relationship and a good communication with your client, again, it's not gonna matter if you have a home-based business. And if we're talking general tips, you know, obviously that goes above and beyond. And if you're a bigger shop, then obviously you need somebody to be that if you're managing so many people that you can't be the communicator with clients. But for us, you know, we communicate all the time with the clients, we're texting the clients, we're building a relationship with the clients. And, you know, so it makes sense that it's a home-based business, you know? Like I, I tell them openly like, hey, you know, I have a newborn and, and it's great, you know, I don't wanna move to another shop. And, and it's true, I don't wanna to move to a big shop. You know, I, I walk out of the door, I eat lunch with my family every day. Um, there's a lot of positives here um, to be had. So, you know, you build that relationship and it's relatable. It's like, oh, you know, you're a, per you're a person just like me, you know, it's not a business, you know, and, and there's some other things where I'm open seven days a week if need be, you know, and I just take whatever day off that I get, it doesn't matter, right? So that's the benefit of a home business. And if you're a home business, you're probably a one man show like me, um, maybe two at most, right? So the other benefit is you can adjust your schedule however you want. And for example, I'm the only business that's open full hours, seven days a week. And I don't necessarily work seven days a week, but I'm available if I have a job that comes uh, during that time. And there's a lot of people that are busy during the week. So I get increased clientele because they're looking for, hey, I, I'm working 12 hours a day. You know, I'm a doctor, I'm working 12 hours a day, I'm working 70, 80 hours a week. You know, I may only have one day off and it may be a Saturday or a Sunday and I may have to drop it off on my way to work at seven in the morning or, you know, whatever the case may be. So client communication and relationship, um, it helps with that from a business perspective, but from a home-based business, it's super important because that relationship leads to less judgment about where you're working. All right, the next thing we talk about is we're talking about, you know, we talk about client communication and professional and, and, um, and all that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn what some may consider a negative or a disadvantage of being at a home business, and we're gonna turn that into a positive. And the positive for us is that 
you know, if I answer the phone, the person that gives you the quote is the person that's installing your PPF, is the person who is installing your ceramic coating and paint correction or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so there's never, well, I don't want to say never because I'm not perfect, um, but there's never a miscommunication. You know, there's never a, you know, somebody answered the phone and said you could drop it off at 8 a.m. and then nobody's here to open the shop or, you know, whatever, right? I know everything. I'm controlling everything. I'm, again, if you're watching this because you're a home-based business, you're probably a one-man show. And so, you know, you turn that negative, p potential negative perception into a positive, right? Like, I'm the only one touching your car, really. You know, I'm, uh, I'm here. I'm open all these hours. I'm, I'm here for you. Um, I only do one car at a time, so your car's not going to come in and just like sit. Um, you know, it's in here, and it's, you, you know, it's 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 all positive from a negative. You know, and so that is something that's really helped us. A lot of clients like that. You know, they're looking. There's a lot of great detailing shops. You know, and but people are really realistically, people are looking for personal connections. They're not looking for. I mean, everybody's looking for the best, right? But if you have a bunch of best, a bunch of good, you know, you got a bunch of 4.8, 4.7, five-star Google reviews, you know, you're looking for a personal connection um, because they're going to discount that one or two bad reviews. We, we're five out of five stars, you know. I, I don't know if that'll be that way forever, um, but we have uh, about 155 out of five-star reviews. And so people do call us because we're five out of five, but realistically the 4.8 or the 4.7 is still a great review. And there's a, you know, probably a couple bad reviews in there somewhere over the course of five plus years in business. So it's expected. So people are looking for that personal connection and you can give that to them when you're a home-based business. Cause again, I'm assuming you're a one, one person show. All right, final tip. And, um, it's important and it came up a lot uh, in online discussion and Facebook groups and stuff on my other video about making 30k a month out of your garage and that is it can't be done because it's illegal um, and that may be true all right so I don't have an HOA um, but I also did everything by the book and that's my tip number seven and my final tip is do everything by the book because if you do it by the book then you have you know, no recourse. There's people have no recourse against you, right? Like, and it also builds credibility when you're talking about, yeah, I'm a home-based business, but you know, I also am insured. I'm insured to drive your vehicle. I've got, you know, tons of security cameras that record for 30 days. Um, you know, I've been through the planning and zoning commission and I've been through the city council meetings and, you know, I have my business license is up on the wall. I have my tax identification, you know, um, you know, there's no under the table stuff and, and like, I hate taxes and, and everything more than anybody you probably know. Uh, but when it comes to the business, um, I report all the income and you know so it, it's you know a lot of times i see businesses i see detailers and you know they're only accepting cash app or venmo or something it just seems unprofessional and it doesn't seem legit so the primary method in which i bill people is through quickbooks online you know it's not a plug for quickbooks by any means because uh you know they they can be a pain too but you know you know, I have a square terminal, I have QuickBooks, you know, and, you know, insert square, Stripe, you know, whatever pro payment processing service you want to use, it doesn't matter. But, you know, people should be able to come to your business, you know, know that you're licensed, know that you're insured, know that like the city's not going to shut you down next month because you're just, oh, you just typed into Facebook that you're now a business, you know, which I see a lot of, right? I was just like, oh, I want to open a business, so I'm on Facebook and I'm good, you know? Um, so they want to know that you're going to be around, you know, they want to know that you're legit and you're not just like using this as a side hustle. And of course, if you're building a professional space, they're going to be able to see it's not necessarily a side hustle. If you're in that dirty garage and you have no business license, no tax identification, then now it looks like a side hustle. Now people wonder how long you're going to be around, what kind of quality, you know, what's your lighting like. Uh, but if you do everything by the books and you're fully legit, it builds up confidence in your ability and it gives clients, you know, the confidence to know that 
you know, they're coming to, it may be out of house, uh, but that it's a legit business. And so that's really important. So that's uh, tip number seven. And I hope you enjoyed these tips. I put the chapters in the thing so you could skip around and not have to listen to the full video if you didn't want or didn't care about certain tips. Um, but I hope it's useful and I hope this, uh, hope this helps.